Okay, so the goal of these, this set of tutorials is basically to take you from A to Z, going from nothing to having a pretty cool flow map. So the first step that you need to complete whenever you make a mapping project is, of course, not to find the data, but to think of the map purpose. And the purpose of this map is going to be to, um, I don't know, let's say we're want, we want to map Syrian refugees and basically make a map that will give people to donate money to our nonprofit organization which may or may not be a shady nonprofit organization, but nonetheless. So what we need to do is go online and find some Syrian refugee data. Look at that, it's popping up. And let's see here. How many are there and where are they? That seems promising. And yeah, it's just a newspaper article, but let's scroll down and look for the good stuff at the end. Where'd they get their information? Oh, beautiful. Bingo. So what do we have here? First of all, we have something that we need to download as an Excel sheet. So I'm going to, whenever you see a Google Doc thing, this is a good idea to do. All right, we will just save this here to our desktop. And then open it. Shut down Chrome. All right, so. Now what we have is the total number of registered refugees from Syria to each country here, the percent that is of the total Syrian refugee population, percent of population in the host country itself. Wow. Uh, the population in the host state, okay, well, and then projected, I don't know, we'll just delete that because it seems pretty meaningless. And basically what we're going to do is map the number of refugees with a flow map leaving these states. We can leave this other information, I suppose. I don't really care about the population in the host state. All right, so we have our data. This is great. Probably want to keep the data date. And now we can get going. So flow maps are basically proportional symbol maps, at least when you use line width to represent the value of something, which basically those are the best flow maps nine times out of 10. So the thing to do here is to figure out how can we basically create proportions of the registered refugee um, number. I'm gonna hide these because we really don't need them. I just didn't feel like deleting them. So this is a pretty straightforward task in um, Excel. First thing we're going to do is we're going to sort these from biggest to smallest. There we go. There we go, now you guys can see. So we're going to sort these from biggest to smallest. So let's do this. Let's expand the selection. That's from smallest to biggest. Obviously, we will go the other way. I always expand the selection, otherwise you'll mess everything up. All right. We'll call this proportion. I'm just gonna make this bold across the top. And then notice, well, I don't know why exactly there's a period in here. But that's odd. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so proportion. What we're going to do is the biggest value is going to be 100%. So the proportions are going to be based off of the highest value. So what we need to do here is determine what percent is 436,000 of 535,000. And to do that, we can type equal sign, click on the cell, which is B3 divided by, and we could click on this cell, which would be B2, obviously, but we don't want to do that because we're going to divide every one of these values by uh, Lebanon's value. So what we can do instead here is type dollar sign, then type B, dollar sign, then type 2, and hit enter. What this does is basically, um, it's saying keep this the same. If you move this formula, keep always divide by B2. As we'll see, this can come in handy. If you click on the lower right-hand corner here and drag down one, we can click here. And now B4, which is this value, is being divided by B2 because we put the dollar signs in. If you double-click this, it'll go all the way to the bottom. So now we have, of the largest value, this value is 81%, this value is 76%, 30%, 14%, yada, yada, yada. And since I hate too many decimals, 
being a person that loathes too much accuracy, we'll do that. All right, so we have that done. Now, what we have to do is basically figure out how thick our lines should be. Now, this is also a neat little formula we can do here. So we don't really know yet because we haven't started drawing our lines. Maybe our map isn't laid out. But we can set this up so that whatever value we decide to make the thickest line, which will be the most important line, because the thickest line is the one that you know we have to determine how, much, how dominant it will be on the map. So we'll be playing around with that. But let's just start by saying that we'll make this line, I don't know, 100 wide. Well, what we can do here then is, again, we can type equal sign, and then we can type um, E3, which would be the, the percent, times. And instead of typing F2, what we're going to do again is dollar sign $F$ dollar sign $2 and hit enter. And of course, a line width of 100, 81% of 100 is going to be that. So I'm going to change, well, actually, I'm not going to change that yet. So I'm going to double click this and notice that now it's E6 divided by F2. So that's perfect. But the reason we do these formulas isn't just to be, you know, kind of seem smart and archaic. It's because if we decide we want to change our value here later on, this line isn't thick enough and we want to up it to 175, as soon as we change this value, all the other values change appropriately. So that's why it's great to use formulas in Excel. All right, so we'll, we'll hit save here because we've done good work. I'm going to really type line thickness. All right, so let's go to Illustrator, and um, hmm, this isn't going to work because this isn't the right place. Hold on one second. Okay, so uh, I just played around a little with Map Publisher, which is an awesome GIS plugin for Illustrator, and did this in a couple seconds. All right, so now we have our, our countries that we need on the map and let's start drawing. So the first thing we're going to do is this is my mapped area so just pretend you imported this from Adobe or uh, from ArcGIS and we're going to add a whoops it's locked. We're going to add a sub layer and call this refugee flows and now it's a pretty good idea um, if you can actually swing it to basically have Excel open. And we said the, f uh, yeah, I don't really want that. We said the first line was going to be 175 thickness. And so we're going to start with um, Sirius right here, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> and that's okay. This is kind of a random topic. So we'll, with our... Sorry, i got to get my stuff straight here. With our refugee flows layer highlighted, we'll start drawing in this. And notice it's a white outline. Um, don't really dig that. Let's go with something a little more menacing to start. Red. Let's do a red. And let's do no fill. All right. So we'll start in Syria. And where were they going again? Someone please tell me. 175 to Lebanon. Well, that's not very far, but that makes sense. So we're going to draw a little Bezier curve here. And um, there we go. We've got a line now. Its thickness is pretty thin. We have to change this to 175. Hmm. What do you guys think? A little too big? A little too thick? So let's go back to our chart here and type in 100 and see what happens. Still too much. Now, one thing I could do, quite honestly, but I don't have time nor the inclination because this is just a demo, is I could zoom in on this area much more. Um, and if I did, then this line might not be so monstrously thick. But I mean, if if it might be, it would still be the same thickness, granted. But it wouldn't look so ridiculous on a, a much larger scaled map. But let's do this. Let's go down to 50 then. And let's click on here and make this 50. All right, that's more like it. Now, there's some other um, things that we can do here. 
we can, for example, so we've got this one flow to Lebanon, and basically it's great, but right now it just looks like a slug. So let's go to the strokes palette, and down here you can add arrowheads, and you can add them on both sides, but we really just want one on this side. But here's the problem. Look how huge this arrowhead is. I have a clipping mask here, so trust me, that is an arrowhead. So what we need to do is go down here and type 15%. And then there's another thing we need to do. Um, where you place the arrowhead can also be chosen. So right now, the arrowhead is placed so that the tip of the arrowhead goes to the end of the line. We want to add the arrowhead to the end of the line. And we want to also up here we have a rounded cap on our line. We would we need to have a butt cap, which <laughs> I've never said that on radio before. All right, so we're going to uh, do that. We have our first little flow arrow. If we don't like the angle or whatnot, that's not a big deal. We can use the direct select tool and click on here and tweak it a little bit. Ooh a little more curve than that. Good. All right, so there's the first one. Now, that was 50. Notice when I typed in 50 here, it changed all of them to the appropriate width. Let's go to Jordan, 41. All right, so Jordan, this map scale really is too small here, so I don't, I should zoom in. But So we're going to click here. And here, and of course, you probably shouldn't do this with a flow map, but given my situation, uh, you don't want your lines to curve too radically, and that's pretty radical. We will add a an arrowhead again, and a, what was it, 15%. And here's the key, of course. The width of this line should not be 50, it should be 41. And since the arrowhead's a percent of the line width, that sizes nicely. All right, let's do one more. 38, Turkey's 38. Uh, let's do an interesting one. Let's do Egypt for seven. go. Um, and then again, arrowhead. You guys get the gist. Notice that this arrowhead gets particularly small because I typed in the wrong percentage. There we go, 15%. So here we go. We've got our arrows and stuff, but it still isn't looking that great. It kind of looks like a robot drew it or something. So there are a variety of things we can do to make this look better. And that's what I'll show you in the next video. Anyway, if you get to this point, you're doing well. You have your data. You've, you've Hopefully, you've drawn all of your lines, and then we can go from there. All right, I'll see you in the next tutorial.